Hey, what is happening, everybody out there? This is Jake James Lugo, and welcome to Gamers with Gains. This is a brand new episode of a definitive discussion, and this one's going to be fun because I got a special guest with me. I got Seth Macy, my boy. What's going on, my dude? Hey, dude. How's it going? I'm doing great, man. So we're going to talk about the Super Nintendo. Now, the reason why we're talking about Super Nintendo is because it's the 25th anniversary of the Super Nintendo, the SNES. A lot of people excited. We I saw a bunch of people talking about it on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, and stuff. I know GameSpot put up one of the commercials for the SNES, which was very nostalgic for a lot of people. So let's let's just get right into it. Like, what about the SNES was so awesome? Like, you owned an SNES growing up, correct? Oh yes, I did. I worked uh, the entire summer of what was it, ninety one, to make enough money to buy. A Super Nintendo. It was a guy was either going to buy a Super Nintendo or I was going to buy a complete skateboard from CCS. And I ended up buying a Super Nintendo. And sometimes I wonder how different my life would be if I had bought that skateboard. I, maybe I'd be writing about skateboards instead of writing about you video games. You'd be the next that, Tony Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I'd be I'd be the, I'd be flipping tricks instead of you know collecting games. But it doesn't matter because I'm happy. You can do both. Nobody's saying you exactly. can't do both. But yeah, I worked all summer. I raked blueberries in Down East Maine, which is backbreaking labor, um, especially when you're, I think I was 13 years old in 1991. Mm-hmm. You know, it was $7 a bushel, and it took me a long time to make a lot of, you know, the money. I didn't actually make enough money, but my parents kind of like, oh, go do some yard work and we'll kind of. You had to go get, get the allowance money, that cushion. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Everybody yeah, had to we, do that. <laughs> right. And then, you know, we ordered it out of the JCPenney catalog, now, and it arrived. Now, big question. What was the first game that you got with your Super Nintendo? Because I think that's a big uh, thing for a lot of people. You know, whenever you get your your, your, your console, or at least the console right. that you buy and stuff, your first game. Because that's like that's like the defining moment for a lot right. of people. Are you talking other than the pack-in? Because, I mean, Super Mario World, obviously. Okay, Super Mario World was the pack-in. Okay, so did you get yeah. another game besides the pack-in? Did we did it. Was- get another game until christmas oh, okay. and i got i was dying i needed i just needed pilot wings i had to have that game in my life and i got it and my brother had to have f-zero and he got it and uh those games are fantastic and so those are the first you know non super mario games that we had for super nintendo my friend who had one he got ultraman nice. that was not a good game <laughs> it's a good like series you know but yeah. the game not not good at all unfortunately but but that's a good selection though i mean mario world packing probably arguably i was listening to one of the kind of funny game podcasts and colin was saying like that's probably one of the best packing games you know for a launch period without question i would definitely agree with mr moriarty's moriarty's statement there um yeah because you know i got the super nintendo uh it was like school had just started and within three days i'd beaten super mario world and all you know everyone at school was like oh yeah it only took you three days. That seems like it was worth the money, but that's because they were idiots. They didn't realize that then I could go back and like find secret paths and there's a oh, star hell path. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. So there's like all this depth to it, to you know beyond that. So yeah, I definitely agree. That is probably the great. I can't, you know, Super Mario Brothers for Nintendo is iconic. It's like yeah, the, true. Maybe one of the you know most recognizable games, but. Man, Super Mario World is perfection. Mario World's like Mario Brothers on steroids. That I always yeah, say that because it's like everything. I mean, minus the fact that I don't well because they have so many secrets. There's a huge uh, world map to go to every single one of those levels in there, and like little hidden levels to discover and stuff. There's a lot to do. Yeah, in there, and and Mario Brothers was a meaty game, but like it just took it to another notch in Mario World. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That was definitely yeah. awesome. Oh yeah, and one. I mean, one of the great things about Super Mario World is you can. You, know, you could be an okay gamer and get through it and beat it and be like, yeah, I beat it. Or, you know, but then if you want to take it to the next level, you can try those crazy hard, like, Star Road levels. Oh, yeah. They're just, like, you know, but you don't have to do that. So it's great. There's just, it's such a good game. It's so incredibly well done. Definitely. Now, here's the funny thing, because, and the reason why I'm glad that I brought you on here to talk about SNES with me is because we both have two different perspectives on polarizing ends because you owned an <laughs> SNES. Okay? Yes, I did. I, I didn't. I, in that time frame that some called the console wars, I was a Genesis kid. I owned a Sega Genesis. And that was, the big, that was the big thing for a lot of people. But one of the things that was unique about that time, which you don't really find a lot anymore. I mean, some people still do it. 
you know, here and there. But it was more of a thing back then, was that you would go to other people's houses and see what consoles that they had, and you would play right. other games there. So, like, if you were really into games, you had a bunch of friends that everybody had different consoles, or some of oh, you yeah. had a variety and such, or you had especially a variety of games, because you all had different tastes. So, I had friends that had SNES while I had a Sega Genesis, and we would all, like, hang out, have play dates and stuff, and just play right. a variety of different games. That's how I played Mario World. That's how I played Donkey Kong Country. That's how I played F-Zero. That's how I played uh, the S- the SNES version of Mortal Kombat 2. That was a big thing. So, uh, Street Fighter 2, that was another big thing. Oh, where my God. Multiple versions of the same game on different consoles, but they were different. Right. And the best yep. one that I thought was Aladdin, because Aladdin... You know, on Genesis, you had the, the 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 version with the sword, and it was a lot more "quote unquote" violent. But it was a totally different game on Super Nintendo. Right. Yeah, I have the Super Nintendo version. I I've never played the Genesis version. I feel like I'm missing out. I mean, basically, imagine that game, okay, with you know different types of levels and also the ability to use a sword. Like I don't know why uh, Nintendo or or maybe it was Disney decided not to have like you know some of the same abilities some of the same stuff on super nintendo maybe again it was probably nintendo's thing about being a much more family friendly quote unquote or kitty console right. i mean it wasn't right, necessarily right. kitty because there were there's some crazy games that had that did tackle adult subject matter like again final fantasy 2 final fantasy 3 which was 4 and 6 oh. for us you know back then and, right. other, and a variety of other games and such but like there you'll have those differences amongst different types of games that were multi-platform like again genesis got hyperstone uh highest or hyperstone highest for tmn and uh turtles in time for super nintendo like right. again, and essentially like the the starting level is like the same game but then all of a sudden it changes to something completely different between the two consoles man i think i need to pick up hyperstone heist sorry i'm just looking i, I look i like to collect games it's i was you know what you were you reminded me uh my friend you know when i was growing up he was a sega kid and i would go over to his house and spend the night he had a master system yeah. and of course i was like i was hardcore nintendo i was like Pfft. You know, I didn't want it, but he was playing Fantasy Star, the original Fantasy Star. Good game. It had me quest- oh yeah, it had me questioning my beliefs because this is like early on. I just discovered discovered RPGs with uh, the original Dragon Warrior for the NES. Like made me fall in love, and that is a pretty basic, like you know, top down, and then you go into a battle, black background uh, when you're in a dungeon, and just like a sprite. But like going through the dungeons and Fantasy Star. You know, they're quote-unquote 3D. Man, I had uh, serious thoughts about getting the Genesis, but I couldn't betray my, my Nintendo heritage. And, and that was why. the thing. Like, you know, back then, between the two consoles, especially, you know, really focusing on Super Nintendo, is that there were some key differences between the two consoles. And, like, there was something yeah. out there. Between the both of them, there was something there for everybody. And it was really more... It was kind of like something out of West Side Story or the Jets or the Sharks, where, you yeah. know, on the playground. <laughs> that That's, like, the best, like, you know, analogy I could put for it. But, like, there were some phenomenal games uh, oh, back yeah. then on that console. Again, when, when, when Donkey Kong Country first came out, I remember being enthralled by Donkey Kong Country because it was so different. I mean, it, it oh, was kind yeah, of like, yeah. again, it looked 3D. It wasn't really true 3D like that, but it was like, it looked 3D. It was like, oh my God, mm-hmm. like, this is amazing. Like, where the hell is this on my Sega Genesis? Like, th- those were games right. that really kind of like made me question that. And then you had other games, you know, later on that I played, you know, like Act Razor. You had, uh, what is it? Oh my God, like Mario Kart, another one. You know, you didn't have uh-huh. racing games like that on Sega Genesis, at least to that type of extent, especially F Zero and all those uh, other stuff. You know, right. and then Star Fox. I, again, I fell in love with Star Fox playing oh it on God. SNES. The, the list goes on and on and stuff. Now, I used to be able to run through mm-hmm. Star Fox flawlessly. Like I would get everything that you could possibly get, hit everything you could possibly hit. You know, get that uh, trigger that uh, that space slot machine in the asteroid field. I used yeah. to be the master of that game. Not nice. anymore. I'm real bad at that. Now. <laughs> it take it take takes uh what is it the years take off your skill? <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. That's totally true. That's totally true for everybody. Eventually, <laughs> can't be number one at forever and stuff. I know. But um, I wanted to ask you, okay, what were some of your what was some of your best memories or or the best memory that you had playing a specific a specific Super Nintendo game that was like phenomenal? That like this is this is the reason why you wanted this console. Like this is it. Like this is the epiphany of oh, the SNES for you. So, okay, uh, probably, although Final Fantasy 3, which is Final Fantasy 6, I like more. I think when I first got Final Fantasy 2 and Final played Fantasy through it, I was like, which, yes, which is Final Fantasy 4, um, that was like, okay, this is what I've been wanting since, like, I, my eyes were open to RPGs, to this, this is the 16-bit era. Like, that, 
you know, the great huge sprites and like so many levels and this incredible music and this long story and you get to go underground and there's that stupid level with the doors that I hate, which I care, not the doors, the walls that was uh, in the cave down there. That game, yeah, that was the game that just like made me really feel like I've arrived. Gaming has arrived. This is the greatest game I've ever played in my life. Um, it was a super, yeah. Loved that game. I remember waiting for the UPS because we only have, you know, I live in a small town. There's one guy who used to deliver. Yeah. And I watched him go by my house like five times on the day that it was supposed to arrive. I ordered it COD. It was like $75 used. And uh, my parents had told him, like, oh, yeah, uh, Seth's at home today, so just drive by a bunch of times because he's expecting you. And he did. <laughs> that, that's great. Now, yeah. One of the other cool things that I thought was awesome about SNES and really kind of like was a step up above Genesis in some regard. Again, speaking as a Genesis kid, I can admit this, was the was the sounds for yeah. a lot of the games, the music specifically. I resonate a lot with the music of video games. You know, it's Definitely. I'm not a I'm not a connoisseur where I like really get into the minutiae of it where I'm like, you know, this this piece of music is better than this, or get to like that musical kind of like, you know, educational aspect of it. But I, I know when something sounds very good and I know when something sounds really phenomenal when I either constantly have to listen to it or i constantly want to go back to it that's when i know it's awesome like yeah. there are so many games on super nintendo that had phenomenal music again you can name oh. any one of the final fantasies on the on the console that, that oh, yeah. are, are they're amazing i could also throw in there some of the castlevania games castle oh my god dracula that- x even though dracula x wasn't that great compared to its original rondo of blood the music on that game was awesome super castlevania 4 same thing i mean that's, that's opening stage music that kind of jazzy dun, 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 exactly dun, 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 dun. i'll still just put that on like youtube in the background and just jam out to it oh yeah like and then there's other games too mega man x you know the whole mm-hmm. x series itself just you know that's a oh. whole giant conversation of itself but one of the things the reason why <laughs> I, fell, I fell in love with mega man x again was through its music because i remember i mean I, I didn't grow up playing the original mega man games i played a lot of them later on which it's fine mm-hmm. i know not everybody uh not everybody uh grows up with like specific classics and stuff because obviously you're probably born afterwards and such like that but i did respect them back then i knew about them from other people talking about it especially people that were older than me but Mm -hmm. Mega Man x specifically really kind of got me into it because not only was the music fantastic the sprite work was amazing the gameplay felt solid and fluid again Mm -hmm. you know going through the different boss uh was it boss masters or the robot masters and stuff you know you find that hadouken power up yeah all the secrets the 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 crazy pops like the hadouken (laughs) And, you know, uh, all those ever, their stuff was amazing about it. Like, there, there were some solid games. But really, I really go back to the soundtrack of that mm-hmm. game specifically. Because I remember, uh, what is it, uh, Spark Mandrel. Spark Mandrel stage, my, one of my most favorite uh, musical tracks in any video game. It just sounds so good every mm-hmm. time I hear it. And in some of the later iterations of that game, you know, they kind of approved upon it. You know, did different remixes and stuff in there. For better or worse in one way or another. But I remember specifically Spark Mandrel stage being phenomenal in that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, I starting to think like I've just got the uh, the Super Castlevania song stuck in my head. Now. <laughs> I love it. I just it's really good. I mean, one other thing that we can also say too, like looking at some of the Super Nintendo first party games, like you know your Legend of Zelda's Link to the Past, oh uh, what is it? Uh, Super Metroid, you know Mario World, Thanks. Mario nope. All Stars, you know all those different games. Uh, besides the quality and the visual fidelity of those games, like the music from a lot of those games is phenomenal too. Like, you know, Super Metroid, the ominous tracks as you're going around some of the different environments. Uh, Link to the Past, you know, the whimsical nature, besides the Legend of Zelda theme, which is like kind of like remixed, or at least it's revisited stuff, some of the ominous themes that, and different types of uh, whimsical themes you get from exploring the dungeons or like some of the boss fights in there really are awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just the uh, the, the harp, you know the the classic Final Fantasy kind of harp opening music, like oh, yeah. on the Super Nintendo. That was a game I would turn on Final Fantasy two and just listen to that like opening theme because it just sounds so good. It just hits me. It's like uh, what's that ASMR? That's yeah. what that that is for me. Just that like. Do you remember? Do you remember the the Red Baron theme from Final Fantasy two or Final Fantasy four? Uh I don't it's I'm in sure the very beginning it, of the game when you're on the ship right and it's just like it's like the intro of the game and you're going to pretty much massacre the village like that in the right. name of the king it's that theme that's like pretty much the red baron's like main musical theme so it, it, it just like it set the tone of that game so well it just hit on such a good nerve for me and then i was just yeah. totally in from that point onward it's like all the musical pieces of that game again the final fantasy music is phenomenal of itself but even on just uh-huh. the Super nintendo it was just amazing right. 
man, it's such a good system. So it's now, probably my favorite system. Oh, really? It's like it's probably one of your yeah. favorite systems of all time. Uh, I mean, technically, if we want to get down, the Super Famicom is actually my favorite system of all mm-hmm. time because uh, prior to the Super Nintendo's release, Nintendo's carefully orchestrated and extraordinarily effective hype machine was in full effect, and so they were like teasing us in Nintendo Power, like here's Super Famicom, and I knew, you know, everything that you could know about Super Famicom from game magazines. You know, you couldn't go on the internet and yeah. watch like a YouTube video of some guy who got his hands on a Super Famicom before a street date and like did an unboxing. You had to find it in magazines. So I had this crazy fondness for the Super Famicom that obviously, you know, software-wise and hardware-wise, they're exactly the same, but the design, the aesthetics uh, of the Super Famicom, especially of their uh, of the game boxes and box art, I like very much more than the Super Nintendo. Definitely. But that's just my weird, quirky little thing. Interesting. Interesting. Fun fact. I remember, <laughs> if you've ever read uh, Console Wars, you know, that book, that Console Wars, that pretty much cover, covers that time frame between Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, or basically the battle between Sega and Nintendo at that time frame. Uh, the Sega employees were kind of a little bit terrified of the Super Nintendo coming out, or at least making its way to the States, because they were trying to, like, really kind of get the most out of Genesis before then, before the real right. things started to hit the fan there. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That was, that was Genesis a crazy had been time. out for a little, a little while there. Yeah, Genesis and, uh, had been out for some time. I know that. Yeah, I remember like seeing Genesis, you know, pictures of Genesis games, and being like, "Whoa, I, maybe I want to get a Genesis." But once, once I found out that Nintendo was going to be making their own 16-bit, I was like, yeah, "Forget it!" Like I was, I was. They had me hook, line, and sinker. I wrote a compare and contrast. Did you ever have to do a compare and contrast essay when you were in like ninth grade, eighth grade? You know, mm. you take two subjects. I don't remember. Maybe. Possibly. Well, we had an assignment when I was a freshman in high school. It was like, compare and contrast. you got to compare and contrast two things in the essay. Uh-huh. And uh, I compared and contrasted the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo based on hardware and which was the winner. And obviously, just on hardware alone, with the exception of the clock speed on the Sega Genesis was, I think, 7.49 megahertz. And the Super Nintendo was like 3.5 megahertz. But other than that, hardware, hands down, the Super Nintendo one anyway you but must i must have gotten some boy. dirty looks man from the other kids oh, yeah dude i didn't care like we, we had a current events class and uh it was everyone else is like oh you know something something like iraq or whatever and i was like oh uh nintendo will be releasing a super fx chip it will allow for poly- polygon 3d graphics uh and the first game is a game called Star Fox. yeah oh yeah that was crazy now I want to ask you, because we touched on a little bit on it before, but I want to expand upon sure. it, because you have to talk about this with Super Nintendo. What did you think about a lot of the games, especially at that time, where they were kind of making the system to be more family-friendly, and then at some point they changed it, especially with Mortal Kombat 2 coming out, when those sales for the original Mortal Kombat on Super Nintendo weren't as good as compared to those on the Genesis and stuff. Like, did, right. growing up with it, and you did you, like, notice things like that? Or it's like, did oh, you yeah. see... Like different again, we go back to Aladdin because Aladdin was a little bit more "quote unquote" violent because you had a sword, right. and the Super Nintendo version you didn't. And then there's other differences in various different games throughout the library of the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis that had the same type of titles on there. Yeah, uh, I mean it's kind of I matured along with the games, so you know I started playing when I was 13, and the kid the games were pretty kid friendly. But once I started getting to where I wanted to play something, you know, like okay, so Mortal Kombat, the huge huge uh, crisis of of that era big was debate. that mortal Kombat, right was that mortal Kombat had sweat on the super nintendo and it had blood yeah it had all the fatalities oh yeah that's had... just sweat kitties <laughs> right on uh, the genesis well that year my brother and i asked her we're like mom dad all we want for christmas is sega genesis and mortal Kombat, and that is what changed me you know I was like 16 at the time, maybe when that game came out. So, mm. yeah, I, I matured along with it, and I moved on to their competitor because that's what I wanted. Because I didn't care. I wanted blood. I wanted to rip people's spines out. I wanted to play Mortal Kombat. And then Nintendo, of course, smartened up and just kind of. They never, I don't think, officially, you know, dropped their sort of family image, but they didn't enforce it anymore. I guess, you know. I think they weren't as strict with it because, again, you look at some other games, even around that time frame prior to, like, Mortal Kombat 2, you look at some other games that they get into, like, other types of content or other types of discussions that are technically adult. Like, look at Razor, You're being a god. 
you know, right. for the most part. I mean, look at Final Fantasy IV, Final Fantasy VI. I mean, again, skewing on the time frame here of when those games came out and such. But those are games that deal with a lot of different kind of like heavy, heavy, uh, what is it, subject matter. You know, yeah. just beyond yeah. the simple like blood and guts and stuff that's just like so right. in your face. It was pretty, I don't know, I mean, I'm sure somewhere in Nintendo of America had a set of written down guidelines, but it seemed like it was pretty arbitrary. I mean, with the, you look at the original Zelda for the NES, and on his shield, he's got a cross, like a Christian cross. Yeah. And they take that out of every other game because they don't, they don't want Christian iconography in any of their, you know, video games that come out west. And that just seems kind of odd to me, but then, you know, then they... They let they'll let you have mature themes like a mature story or you know things that happen, but you know can't show any blood. That's that's a no no. That that might make the kids upset. So I don't know. Nintendo wasn't really. It didn't seem like they had any laser focus on what was setting them off. There was a lot of gray area there. It seems. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. But why not? But so now we come towards the big thing. That it's a nice way to kind of wrap up this discussion of uh, 25th anniversary of Super Nintendo. Five games. Okay, we're gonna limit five it to five. Games. I know, I know, it's tough limiting to any Ooh, sort of number so because hard. there's so many good games in the library of right. Super Nintendo that anybody could could pick up. Again, there's a million different ways to play a lot of the Super Nintendo's uh, library of games. But five big recommendations, must plays, must tryouts, must owns on Super Nintendo. Dang. Look. Okay. So I'm gonna go right. I'm gonna go big. I'm gonna say everyone needs to play Super Metroid. Yes, I agree. I- Hands I down. went through, yeah. I went through recently and I played it again, and I beat it. And uh, yeah, it's it's a fantastic game. I think for its genre, maybe like Symphony of the Night is better. But mm. if you have any interest in that sort of you know Metroidvania game, you have to play Super Metroid. It's it's the my second favorite Metroid. Inspired um, Symphony of the Night a lot. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I think yeah, like Super Metroid did it so well and then i think symphony of the night perfected that style but that's i could talk compare and contrast hey i could do a compare and contrast essay there on you that. go um, a, that's a whole combo <laughs> <So>. <laughs> uh i got right here final fantasy 6 i'm looking at that is a must play i started replaying that uh Fam- super famicom version i have a translation patch on my retron that game still holds up nice that is a real fun um that is my Maybe my favorite Final Fantasy. I don't know. Arguably Sometimes I one think... of the best RPGs of all time by some. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, there's there's no question about that. Uh, I'm looking at uh, the Secret of Mana. Mm, that good is one. kind. Of, yeah, I I love that game, and I was kind of surprised that some people aren't too keen on it. I think it's wonderful, and the final like boss battle theme is one of the best uh, nice. final boss battle themes in all games. <laughs> Uh, similarly, another action RPG, maybe the best 16-bit game ever made, uh, that's Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger, oh I, yeah, of course. I love yeah. Chrono Trigger. Everybody Chrono loves Chrono Trigger. And again, I, I was playing I Am Setsuna not so long ago, and I was like, man, it makes me really want to go back and play Chrono Trigger, because Chrono Trigger, I have a DS version of that yes, game. The that DS game, uh, re-release. Is, <laughs> yep, I have that one too. That is a perfect, uh, way to play it. I, I oh, yeah. You can get that now, like, sub- 20 bucks i think if you're just like on ebay and you just want the game and you know you don't care about having the box pick that one up you owe it to yourself to play chrono trick it holds up so well it's such a fun story to play through again multiple right. endings awesome battle system awesome music it's wide scope between like different errors it's crazy yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, so i'm uh, i might start streaming that because oh well, no i only have uh, I have to get the the Super Nintendo version is much more expensive than the Super Famicom version, as you <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, that's a yeah. really good game. I oh, know yeah. there's a variety of versions of that game. I know it's like on iOS. I think it's on one point. Yeah, on Steam. yeah. The version, you know, these fan translations are good, but they're not always great. Some fan translations are arguably better than you know what was officially, but a lot of them are just you know somebody who knows just enough about writing in hex and who knows just enough about translating Japanese. So it's it's hit or miss. If and then there you go. There's another whole like show I could talk about yeah, playing right? <laughs> or video games and translating, applying translation patches. Um, so for my fifth game, I think I'm probably just gonna cheat, like go the easy route. I'm gonna have to say Super Mario World. That mm-hmm. game delivers. It just still it's Solid so good. Game. Yeah, 
I mean, if you like Mario, if you like that Mario style, you've got to play Super Mario. If, if you haven't, what is wrong with you? Like, how, who has not played Super Mario World at this point? I'm curious. Yeah, I think I think that's a very good point. I mean, Mario World has been re-released a number of different times. And one of the things I'm going to mention, like, as I, as I mentioned my five now, is, is uh, Super Mario All-Stars and plus Super Mario World. Right. Because that yeah. package was probably one of the best packages period because you have a phenomenal game in super mario world and you have all these like reimagined versions mm-hmm. of super mario brothers on top of all oh, the yeah. other games that were included with it like super mario brothers it's the Team. original hd remaster yeah like an incredible incredible bundle especially on super nintendo it was insane for that day and age oh my god oh yeah oh my god i remember being like are you kidding me i get all these games i used to love and they like look modern uh, yeah sign me up super mario <laughs> brothers the lost levels specifically right? i remember seeing that i remember seeing that in super mario brothers that that re-release on there with that package and i was like wow like mm-hmm. go from 8-bit to this I am down. Like, this is very cool. I remember playing that specific package or just that assortment of games with a friend of mine that used to live on a pizzeria. So we would play, uh, what is it? We would play Super Nintendo games, like specifically that, or PlayStation games. So every time that I would play something like that or like Tekken 2 or Tekken 3, I would associate it with the smell of pizza. Oven, oh, brick dude. oven pizza. Like, hell yeah. That is so amazing. But definitely mention that one. Okay, Super Mario All Stars, Super Mario World specifically. Yep. Uh, F Zero. Of course, F Zero is amazing. F Zero is yeah. badass. Such a yeah. fun, unique racing uh, game that's just like still different. plays really like it's still so much fun to play. Oh yeah, it's 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 just a different take on the racing genre that's just like simple in nature, but like it's so high octane and it just makes it takes it to like the nth degree, like more so than a lot of other racers uh, from back in the day. Like wait, who is that... who is your uh, who is your main in the original? Oh, I'd always episode. go with Falcon. I would always go go with Count Falcon. Really, the blue, the blue Falcon all the time, just randomly. Again, it was like it was like it, it, the same vein. Like a lot of people would go to like in Street Fighter would play Ryu or go to right. go to Mortal Kombat play Liu Kang and stuff like that. You know, same right, idea, right, right. same same general idea. No, that's Captain Falcon. I mean, that's that's the one to have. He's the most you know recognizable. I think I like he's the Samurai most balanced Goro, too. But... I think. What's that? I think he was the most balanced too. I think you know. Yeah, he was the race. most balanced. I played Samurai Goro because he had the highest top end, and that's all I cared about. But if you like banged into a wall, forget it. You weren't catching up. <laughs> yeah, right. The, getting getting off track on that game, it, it was it was a wrap. You had to restart. Like it was okay. it was just so crazy. But yeah. um, uh, third game, Link to the Past. Link to the Past. Oh my God! How did I forget that? Link I to feel the past. like an idiot now. That's Phenomenal. my fifth and a half game. Fifth and a half. <laughs> Link to the Past. Phenomenal game. If you yeah. are remotely interested in the Legend of Zelda series, that is a must play. That takes the the original formula of the original Legend of Zelda on NES yep. and makes it like you know near perfect, if not yeah, perfect. It's, it's perfection. It is. Uh, it's yeah. really, 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 really good. And I know you had a uh, you know obviously more recently you had a Link Between Worlds, which was very heavily inspired by it. It, yeah. it borrowed a lot of elements from it, and you know it introduced new elements, which I think worked for it in its own title. But I think like you'll never have that same type of like you know resonance with a lot of people, especially playing that type of style of game for the first time and reaching mm-hmm. that same level of pedigree as far as quality and everything just coming together so nicely than what you got with Link to the Past. Yeah, man, that was a good one. I, I argue, and the cool thing about that game is not only it still holds up even you know years later and stuff it's still in the conversation of arguably being a better game than the 3d uh versions of zelda like ocarina of time and george mass wind waker etc the list goes on like that game is still held up in that type of echelon right yeah i go back and forth between like uh is uh, ocarina my favorite or is like to the past my favorite because you know i have such good memories of both of those games I think, like, for me, personally, the reason why sometimes, like, again, I, I'm, I'm in the same way where I go between back and forth. I think that Ocarina of Time was great as far as, like, making that series jump into 3D for the first time and making that all work, and that's what was really special. Same way that, like, Final Fantasy VII did it for Final Fantasy the series, just in right. general. That same type of resonance and stuff. But I think about, look to the past, I think about that opening sequence when you get your sword, you know, from, uh, I think it's, it's, it's your uncle or your grandfather. That, that, that kind of like quote unquote dies or gets KO'd. Yeah, I think that's your game. uncle. Yeah. That's your uncle, right? So, like, what, you, thinking at the first time, like when you first see it for the first time, you think, like, oh my God, he died. So now now you have like a clear cut motivation to go deal with all this other stuff and save Princess Zelda, et cetera, like that. So I remember that beginning being so good, like hooking me into the game. I was like, okay, this is awesome. So, <laughs> so um, I got my pick, my number four pick. I'm going to go with Super Castlevania 4. Super that's Castlevania 4. I think it's a great reimagining of the original Castlevania. Yep. Uh, great music. 
uh, new, yes. new mechanics. Again, using the whip in that game, I'm surprised, very surprised, that later games after Super Castlevania 4, especially Dracula X Chronicles, uh, when it when they were all made afterwards, even Symphony of the Night to an extent, doesn't use somewhat similar uh, abilities or somewhat similar mechanics that were established in Super Castlevania 4. Using the whip to go across like certain environments, using the mm-hmm. whip to kind of like you know turn switches to change the environment itself, or, or like a, the way that you attacked enemies and such. I'm surprised the series never visited that again. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a great. I that's one of my earlier games that I had, and I loved it. That uh, that room that spins around, man, that was a mind blower back in the day. Definitely. And then finally, my number five pick. I mean, here's the thing. Again, I go back and forth between this game and, and its sequel. Like that, I would say Donkey Kong Country. Donkey Kong All Country right. was the game that really kind of wowed me, you know, visually. That told me like, oh, this is this is the Super Nintendo. Like, right? This is this is this this is not on my Sega Genesis, and I want this. Like, it just looked good. A lot of people I know, I've seen some other people talk about on podcasts that Donkey Kong Country Two is a better game. It holds up better. It's aged a lot better. But I felt like the charm and like uh, the, the the impact that I had on me as a gamer, as someone that just appreciates the medium and appreciates you know talking about video games, Donkey Kong Country was more of the game that really stuck out to me. Like that again, yeah. the music was like something I never really heard before like that when i remember mm-hmm. making i still remember the first time hearing the jungle jape song like when you're going through the first <laughs> level and like when you just burst through donkey kong's uh house you come out his yep. front door and then you start hearing the congas and the drums and start playing like that 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 still stuck with me and i and i loved it how they kind of like had a very similar if not a somewhat remixed version of that for super smash brothers for the yeah. super smash Bros. 64 i was like okay this was awesome did you have any memories of dk country Oh, yeah, I played the hell out of the original and the sequel. And I can remember, like, lo- the same with you. Like, music, the graphics wowed me. The gameplay would often make me infuriated. Um, it was hard. Getting, yeah, it was, that was a hard, that was super hard It was hard, hard because it was unfair, though. Like, in its defense. That, that's what I was just going to say. Yeah, it, sometimes it just didn't feel fair. Like, um, you know, but... No, I played a lot of that. I used to, like, I had a uh, Super NES Advantage uh, joystick that I bought for Street Fighter 2. Nice. And I would, like, control Diddy with that controller with my foot while I was playing, just, like, long enough to keep him, like, to switch back and forth. It was stupid. It's a gross way to play video games. Don't do that. <laughs> a gross way to play video I'm pretty sure somebody's invented, like, worse ways, though. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. But, um, no, I, uh... It's weird. The the Donkey Kong series, for me, uh, I'm maybe the only person who will say this. I love Donkey Kong 64. I, I 100%ed that game. I thought it was a cool game. I thought it was fun. I mean... I loved it. For years, up until they did Donkey Kong Country Returns, I always wondered why they didn't go back to that platformer. Because I know they had the three games. Everybody hated it. I'm the they only had, person who liked it. They had that, that, that form of the platforming uh, formula, the first three games on Super Nintendo. Then they changed it up. To be a little bit different on N64, which was 3D. And it was fine. It was yep. whatever. Like that. And then you had all the, like these spin-off games, which were just weird. The Conga yeah. Beat. that I never I never got it. I was like, I don't want this like that. <laughs> but but I will say, like, you know, because it's rare. You know, rare guys who made Banjo-Kazooie, guys who made Conquer, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Jeff Ford, Gemini, etc. Like that. I think it was it worked with them because it was their style of game. Like that, especially being heavily influenced by Super Mario 64 and stuff. Oh, and I thought it was a good game for what it was. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely like a seven, like a solid seven. But for me, I could not stop playing it. And, and all, again, music was good. It, it had a lot of humor. I think I think it had a little bit more humor than some of the other entries in the series. Yeah. Oh, you know what? That reminds me. The original Donkey Kong Country on Super Nintendo with the uh, and the manual. You know how in the manual, in the back of all those manuals, they would have notes. Yeah. And Cranky Kong was there, and he's like, "Who?" You know, there's like a like a little word bubble. He's like, "Who even uses these for notes?" And I thought that was that was pretty damn funny because you know what? Nobody That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. So there's a little there's Cranky Kong yelling at you from your. Uh, I from very your seldom book. met anybody that used those. I think I've maybe met one or two people that actually wrote stuff into those notes, and one of them was like yeah. my older brother. That it was just like random <laughs> notes about the game. So I mean, it was some random. It was like Altered Beast or something. Like, just something random like that. Just thrown in a couple random oh, stupid things. You know, things like that. But, like, I never really found anybody that really used those to, like, co- like cover stuff or whatever. But, like, that. But ah, definitely ah, definitely five solid games there for the both of us. For you guys, yeah. again, solid recommendations. One quick fire thought. Did you get any, like, Super Nintendo 
uh, was it peripherals? Like you yeah, know, the, yeah, yeah. The, the, the the bazooka, the the yeah, the, the super, the super scope, super scope. My yeah. brother, my brother, that was like his Christmas present one year. He just was dying to have that super scope, super scope six. See that thing talks fast. <laughs> yeah, it's impossible, and uh, it was fun for a little while, and then we just got tired of it because there's only six games, and you know, there was a cool like Tetris where you shoot, but I, don't, I think that's all we had for peripherals was mm. the super scope. Six. All you really and of course, needed. like I said, the Super Nintendo Advantage. What's that? I said all you really needed was the controller. Like that control yeah. for Super Nintendo was solid. Like that was oh to me God. was awesome for fighting games for obvious reasons for Street Fighter. I mean, it yep. just felt good. It felt a little bit better than my than my joysticks for the Genesis. Even the six button ge- ge- Genesis stick that I had, the, the Super Nintendo controller was felt much better. It's more sleek. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. Nice. And then the Super Famicom controller is even better still. <laughs> You're right. It is, I'm telling you. But yeah, so that's that's our kind of like reminiscing and kind of like ode to the Super Nintendo. 25 years of awesomeness. Okay, which is crazy. Cool. I feel so old. Nonsense. You never go a day over 21. That Like once you're 21, <laughs> you're good. That's it. Hey, Super Nintendo, you're not 25, you're 21. That's it. Right, right. <laughs> like that. The, Nintendo's not 100 years old. They're 21. They, they just right. hit 21. They're always going to be there. Like that. Right, they're product of the 90s. <laughs> exactly. But Seth... Thank you for, for joining hey, me man, on this thanks discussion. For having me. Always always appreciate it. So where can everybody find you? Just find me on Twitter at Seth Macy. Or, you know, find me on uh, IGN Right News. Nice. And you also you have a YouTube channel too, right? I do have a YouTube channel. It's just uh slash Seth Macy or Seth G. Sometimes I throw my middle initial in there, sometimes I don't hold on. I'm gonna make this official right now. <laughs> I should really do a better better job. Uh yeah, it's just uh YouTube dot com slash c slash seth macy nice. you can watch just the most arbitrary ridiculous videos that whatever pops into my head i make there are some good ones in there there were some fun Thanks. ones in there Thank every, you. over time and stuff there'll be links to that stuff all in the description box guys so you can check out all this content check out all the stuff that you post up on twitter on ign as well as also awesome youtube and such but Either way, guys, thank you for listening to this episode of A Definitive Discussion. Don't forget to leave me a like on this video. Comment down below in the comment section. Subscribe to the Gamers with Games channel for all my videos related to gaming, stronger living, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. I will talk to all of you guys again real soon. Peace out, and stay epic, everybody.